Hi, Susan and Matt here. And on behalf of the Organic Produce Summit, we hope you and your families have been well during these very uncertain times. And while we can't meet together face to face this year, we have an exclusive opportunity for you to hear what's going on in the grocery industry from one of the nation's most recognized leaders. It is our pleasure to have Jim Donald, co-chairman of Albertsons Companies and its 2300 stores share his invaluable insight. Leading the discussion today is Kevin Koo of Morning Newsbeat. We thank all of you who have submitted questions for this unique presentation. And without further ado, we'll send things over to Kevin to get started. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Susan. Uh, we're thrilled to be here. And uh, by the way, thanks again to all of you who submitted questions. We'll get to the questions in a little bit. Um, but first, Jim, it's great to see you, but where are you? That's not your house, I'm pretty sure. Hi, Kevin. Hey, everybody. No, I'm at my home away from home, Island Market on Orcas Island. I have been sequestered here for about four months since COVID just started in early March. My home, of course, is all of Albertsons and Safeway and Cars and United and Acme and Shawls, but I don't have any of those on Orcas Island, so I'm here with all my friends at Island Market and uh, 4th of July, we're busier than the 4th of July weekend. We're busier than heck around here and things are good. So I hope you don't mind, but I'm coming from their conference room. <laughs> That's great. The, um, so they're a one store operator, right? Yeah, we're a one store operator on the island. That's correct. I love the way that you say we. Um, but so let me ask you this. So you, you're, you're CEO of one, uh, co-chairman of one of the biggest grocers in the world. You've been CEO of Starbucks and Hagen and Pathmark. Uh, so all pretty sizable companies. So I'm curious, first of all, what do you like most about Island Market? And have you learned anything from that one store operator? Well, let me tell you what has been reinforced for me. Uh, a long time ago when I was at Walmart, just after uh, Sam had passed, uh, David Glass said something to me, David was the CEO then, uh, that I'll never forget. It was after a Saturday morning meeting. We had just surpassed Sears at $40 billion in retail sales. And David came up to me and we had about 30 super centers with more to come. And he said, Jim, he said, I want to tell you something. He said, one day we're going to do $500 billion. And I'm thinking, $500 billion? We just did $40 billion. How do we get to $500 billion? And he said, and Sam told me the same thing too before he passed. But David said, you've got to remember, no matter how big we get, no matter how many stores that we have, you got to pretend like you've got one store, one customer, one employee, and treat them just as special as they're the only ones. Here, working with Jacob and the team and his brother Jason, they're the fifth generation uh, owners of this, founders and owners of, of this company. They've shown me how important it is to be in one store, the only really full super full service supermarket on the island and how they treat all their customers, all their associates and all their suppliers. And there's no different in the world of organic produce. I mean, I don't know how many SKUs that there are, but every SKU is special. And if it's an organic carrot, well, the organic collards hear about the organic carrot special. And then the, the organic banana hears that, that they're all special. And if you can be, if you can show just extra care and concern individually, not as a group, great things start to happen. So that's what is reinforced for me. Uh, and that's what I see every time I come here and I enjoy is this, I'm the only customer here, which I'm not, but it feels like it. Wow, that's great. And it's, and, and that's a, a, a mark of really good management. And I mean, it's one store, but you still have to have the right culture. And I think if I'm not mistaken, the guys are there, right? Jacob well, is I'm not, You know what, that, they should answer the question, it's not me. Let, me. let me get Jacob here really quick. And let me get Tim, our produce pro in here. And guys, come on up here and let you answer, you ask them questions, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, hey. guys. Hey. <laughs> Good to see you. So, um, Tim, let me, let me ask you a question. So, you are, uh, you're on an island off the, off the coast of Washington. How, what has it been like in terms of supply chain for you over the past few months? I mean, it's been tough for everybody. And, and both in general in terms of produce, but specifically in terms of organics. How does that work for you? Well, here on our island, there's been a heavy strain on cooking greens, carrots, onions. This is all organic, but we're kind of special because we're independent and we order from two different suppliers with six day delivery. So we've been able to 
beef up our orders with each warehouse, which has helped us stay in business a lot better. And what, I, what I'd like to say is certain things, tofu took off, organic tofu just went crazy and we were unable to get it. But one of the companies moved back to South Korea because they couldn't get enough people or they got sick or something to, to, to run their line. So that was very interesting and, and quite a challenge also. Must be, course, must be something about the teas, right? Toilet paper, paper towels, and tofu. Tofu. <laughs> Unbelievable. I've never seen, I was ordering 50 cases of organic tofu at a time, and I'd have to put orders in weeks ahead of time for it. It, it, was, it was unbelievable. So we got through it. That's great. So, Jacob, let me ask you one quick question. So what's it like having the co-chairman of one of the world's biggest grocery customer, uh, co companies as, as your customer? Is he a pain in the neck? Um, you know, he comes in seven days a week, and I'm pretty sure that he spends about 50 or $60 every single day just because. And so it's good business. So we, we, we embrace it. Um, but no, really, I, I would say that, you know, anytime that I can uh, surround myself with people that, 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 that know more than I do, and uh, I can be a sponge and learn from him. I mean, he's been selling groceries for so long and probably even before refrigeration. So, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, if he can do that, I'm going to learn everything I can from him and uh, uh, do the best we can here. Well, and I'm sure he's not offended by your comment about his age. Hey, guys, thanks. And I really appreciate your letting us use your conference room today. Uh, could you bring Jim back on, please? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Good to meet you. Thanks, guys. Stay safe. Okay. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Tim. Unbelievable, guys. Uh, and, and I will say, Tim, while he leaves, I think his produce organic business is close to 50%. He's just knocking it down. So it's just, a, he's just doing a great job. That's terrific. So, so let me ask you, you know, God, you, you, you know, as, as, as I look at your career, I mean, you've been through a, a lot of turbulent times, right? You've been through recessions. You've been through 9-11. If I'm not mistaken, when you started, um, your career, it was during the gas crisis. So you've seen a lot of stuff. So how is, is the pandemic different than that? Is it, are we, in a, is this a different kind of crisis? And, and what does it take to kind of lead through um, the kinds of circumstances we're going through right now? You know, um, it, it, it's just a great, it's a great question. And I, I've said this um, since, the pandemic has 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 started, and um, it's a reminder for me that the importance of brick and mortar. Okay, it's no, there's no question, and, and and I'm basing this on what the Albertsons team under Vivek's leadership has done to take care of all the communities that are out there, and so this has given I think uh, a reminder to everybody, and it's just not coming from me, it's coming from our customers as well about how glad they are that we're there for them in, in these particular times. But so it's a reminder me of the importance of a community su supermarket and how the supermarkets interact with the community. But it also, Kevin, this whole pandemic has also reinforced for me the importance of e-commerce because, you know, in, in terms of uh, customers all getting out, some didn't feel comfortable getting out, but, 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 it's, it's shown that they can coexist. And I've always said that the, a good e-commerce platform sits on a very strong bricks and mortar platform. So I, I think it's just been, uh, again, just a reinforcement of the importance of, of, of brick and mortar. And it's not going away, it's here to stay. The other thing it seems to me about brick and mortar is, is that it plays into one of, um, sort of your, one of your leadership tenets, right? Which is that, You've always, since the, as long as I've known you, you've talked about the importance of the front lines, right? That, that the people at the top should never be bigger than the people on the front lines. And certainly the way um, that society has reacted to the people who are working in the stores has sort of reinforced that because they in fact have been bigger and more important than anybody else in the, in the, in the, in the, retail, uh, in the retail world. Look, good leaders, great leaders, their natural instinct is to support their front lines. Sam Walton, Bob Miller, the former CEO of Albertsons, they taught me a lot, but if they taught me anything, it's the importance of the front line. Never be bigger than that front line. So I will tell you this, that, that whether we're in a pandemic 
or not, or whether we're in just everyday uh, ways of doing business, the front line today is still essential for that brick and mortar operator or that e-commerce operator to make a difference and separate themselves from the rest of their competition. And it's the companies, in my opinion, and not just front line in the stores, but you got, you got truck drivers, you got front lines of suppliers where you've got to respect them as well. Uh, the way I see that is that it's, it, it, they're essential every day and they have always been essential every day. And so I don't see that changing. I see it being highlighted and magnified over the time of, of, of this pandemic, but the importance of them is just that, that, that the companies would not be where they're at today if it were not for their front line. So I agree with you that the, the, the people in the front lines, uh, whether they're people working in the store or working or people getting the, the product to the store have always been essential, but I'm not sure they've always felt essential. Um, I, suspect, I suspect in your companies uh, where you've worked, you've made them feel that way. So what do, what do leaders need to do? How, do we, how, how does the industry go, for, go forward and reinforce the essentialness of these, these folks so that they feel it in their bones? Look, I, I got to tell you, um, I wrote a paper uh, called uh, Leading from Home at the beginning of this pandemic and what they don't teach you in business school. I just want to read the opening paragraph because it sort of frames up what you're saying. It says, there is a difference in leading through a crisis for a company that is either facing bankruptcy, which I've had experiences with, becoming outdated at the speed of technology, or becoming irrelevant, irrelevant in today's marketplace compared to a company facing a national pandemic like we are with COVID-19, dot, 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 or is there? A crisis is a crisis. All retailers, Jacob just told me today that his truck didn't get the ferry reservation. It's 4th of July weekend, and now it's being barged over. That's a crisis. So us retailers, we've been facing crises every single day. But then I go on. I said, I said, in our current crisis, or any crisis of any day, communication, Kevin, and that's where I'm going to get at. Communication is without question the main ingredient for leading your team through any crisis and beyond. The art of communication, I say, during this time will enable your company to emerge from that particular daily crisis or COVID-19 stronger than when you went in. Whether you're a leader of a multinational company, leader of a one store on Orcas Island, leader of a Safeway at Cars or United, or whether you're a department manager leading your team through produce, it's the time communication to really separate yourself from the others. So you might even ask this question, has communication improved during this pandemic? And I'm telling you it has, because if anybody that's shopped in a retail environment, you not only see arrows on the floors about which way for the customer to go or stand here at the register or wear a mask, but communicating what products are in, what products aren't in, communicating the difference between an organic banana and a regular banana. How does that work? It's never been better. And I'll also say that the communication between the supplier community, okay, and retailers has been better as well because they're talking more because we need the product. And so I think that the communication piece is key, Cri times of crisis e even more so, but it's also key every single day uh, in every single retailer when you're dealing with people. Would you agree though that that, that has to be worked at? In other words, if, you're, if that's gonna be sustained as we move out of the pandemic, however long that takes, um, through recession, however long that takes, that it's critical for the comp for everybody involved in the in the in this um, in this chain to actually work at making the communication better. Right? You can't just assume it's been good; it's going to stay good, so we just move on. It's Kevin. Good. Exactly. It's not something you work at. Communication in retail, communication today, especially in this time, it's table stakes. It, it, it's something that you have got to do. And you've got to have it as part of your list of things that you do every day. And I'll just give you a quick example. All my career, I have left either a daily voicemail message, daily for 45 seconds, or a daily video of Jim Live coming to you from a truck in Connecticut at Shaw's or a distribution center in, 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 in Washington State or a meat cutting room in, in, in Washington, D.C. The organization 
particularly in times of a crisis, has to hear the leader's voice. He or she has to be in front of them in video or by voice every single day. So it's not something that we're going to work on communication today. No, no, it's, it's not that at all. It's something that you have to do every day. In these days and times, it's table stakes. And I will say this too, and our organic suppliers know this as well. We've got to communicate with them on things that we need, the tofu, the, the, the unbelievable amount of tofu that was sold. You know, so communication is, is critical now to keeping your business running, period, end of story. Is, based on what you're seeing at Island Market, I mean, you talked about when you were at Walmart and talking about one, you know, you have to think about it on a one store basis. Is, are the trends that you're seeing at, at Island Market are they pretty consistent with what you're seeing outside? I mean, is there, is there anything different about their operation in terms of, in terms of organics, in terms of uh, the kinds of services that they're offering? Um, I will tell you this, and it's just not during this pandemic, but organics, and let's just talk produce because we're on a produce summit. Organic produce is seeing major increases across all of my 22 banners with Tim and Jacob here is going crazy right now. And uh, those trends will continue. If you broke it down, I talked to Jerry Callahan, our head of produce at Albertsons. He said, Jim, the tofu, I didn't know about the tofu. He said, but, but everything, anything is green and organic now. It's just blowing out. And so it's just a matter of how people are choosing to eat now. Again, it's not just during this pandemic, but, but, but organic itself has, has, has been growing. And, and Kevin, I will also tell you, it's the way that the retailers are going to market. Whether you're, whether you're co-mingling these foxy uh, strawberries, organic with regular strawberries, co-mingling organic bananas or having separate sections, it's a combination of both. And the communication piece that you just talked about, the way that the stores are communicating about organic produce now is far better than they've ever communicated before. But you're, I'm seeing the trends just going crazy across the country. Do you think that's in part because people aren't going to restaurants, everybody's eating at home, and so the, they're willing to invest both the time and maybe a little bit more money where, where necessary to eat better at home, that they're, they're simply paying more attention to that stuff than they might have had they had all the, the normal distractions of everyday life that we all had you know, up until fe the end of February? Look, I can tell you only from my experience, there's no restaurants open. Okay, they're just starting to come back. And so, so we're cooking every single night, as are most of our customers now. And so, again, the, the organic trend had already started. But when, when you see all of this, 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 this food away from home coming to food at home, there are going to be categories in every single part of the store they're going to be going. And so I, I, I don't know if it's they're eating any healthier. I'm told that they are because they have time to do these more and do a little bit more research and all that. But it is true that the organics are outpacing conventionals. And I would say just a little bit of both. Eating at home and people want to find out more about how this produce has grown. <laughs> so you were talking about organic going crazy. Um, is there something that you think that the organic supplier community should know about about retailing that maybe they don't know? Is there something that, you know, some, some insight that makes them walk away from this video and, and say, oh, I didn't know that, I can act on it. Well, first of all, I tip my hat to all the uh, organic growers out there that are doing business with us, doing business with Island Market. Um, it's, it's amazing that, you know, it, we think times in retail are tough, times are tough on the farms and in the growing of the product as well. But again, in talking to Jerry Callahan, I, I kind of sort of asked him a question. Said, what would you like to say? And his response was, just give us product. You know, R&D, innovation, it's all critical. But right now, what we need more than anything is product. And so I would tell you that, and, and, at the, and, and, and in the times that we're in now too, Kevin, I would tell you whether it was organic produce supplier or a toilet paper supplier. I don't care about the 16 SKUs of toilet paper. I just want toilet paper. And that's what people are wanting right now. And so th that's all I would say is just keep doing what you're doing. Just and, and, and keep that supply chain full. Take care of your employees and, and just make sure that we're on a trend right now in this, in this, in this whole organic produce. And we'll just keep it going. Is there something that you think, as you look both at Island Market and also your stores, that you look at it and say, you know, that's, there's something, there's, 
here's what we need to be doing better in terms of um, in terms of organics and organic produce specifically. Look again. I think that I'm not the expert in produce. Um, I, I I surround myself with experts, and and so what we did at Albertsons companies, and what what I see uh, at Jacob and Tim doing here is they've got organic sections that are identified as this is where all the organics are with the exception of this co-mingling and so i would tell you that having sections that are are, are both that are both mingled together and, and they're both separate is a way to go but i would tell you that from a retailer's perspective and, and we launched this right when i was leaving the albertsons as their ceo is that i would ask the uh the suppliers and i would ask for retailers out there on the call as well is that gs1 labels are critical they're critical for uh, making sure we get the correct ring on an organic banana versus a non-organic banana and to make sure retailers that those are on there, that your, your cashiers understand it and for suppliers to make sure that they supply us with those GS1 labels. That's what I would say is the most important. Look, in, in, in the middle of, uh, of, I'm trying to think of some analogy. All I can tell you now is that the organic produce markets are just screaming and so what, what we need to do when things are just screaming is keep feeding that furnace keep feeding that furnace with with, with, with with plenty of supply making sure we're ringing it up correctly because we've got a lot of new cashiers in the system and all retailers across the country and they might not know the codes like like the seasoned cashiers would know that but that would be my message is that gs1 labels and plenty of product never even thought about the cashier issue that's interesting um a couple of things I know that you're you're passionate about that um, I did want to bring up. I know that um, one of the things that, that when we've had other conversations that you talk about is the importance of having a freshman's mentality. Talk about that for a second. Well, um, it's easier said than done. In 2011, I gave the commencement address to the University of Washington at their Bothell campus. And there was 1,100 college graduates. And I said that congratulations to all 1100 of you. Today, you're a college graduate. Tomorrow, when you wake up, you'll be a freshman again in the real world. And what does that mean? I asked them. I said, this is my thoughts on that. If you think back, college graduates, to your freshman days at the University of Washington, how'd you feel? I'll tell you how you felt. You're nervous. You're curious. You're actually a little scared. You listened more than you spoke, okay? You asked a lot of questions. You respected people because you're a freshman. You even took risk. So if one can maintain a freshman mentality, be it your first day on the job, be it the first day with your significant other, be it the anniversary. We just celebrated our 30th anniversary and I, I was a freshman again. I went back to the first day that I met my wife. I thought it was great. She didn't think it was so great, but I'm telling you right now, if individuals, if Jacob in this store can think back when he first took it over and, and, and have all those, those things that he's thinking about, that, that he listens to the customers more than he talks to them, that he asks a lot of questions, that he's curious about how Sally feels today, and that he's nervous about the day's business, he wants the store to be perfect, everybody that practices this daily will find their success in business better than ever before. Go back to the, all the organic suppliers on this on this on this webinar. If you go back to when organics first launched, how excited were we about doing it? I can tell you that Albertson's companies, Jeff White was putting, all, and, and, and Jerry Callahan were putting all this, this, this push on organics throughout the entire store. It was my first day back at Albertson's after being out of the business for 15 or 20 years. I went crazy. I didn't know organics had exploded across the store like that. I got excited. The day I left, I was still excited about organics because it was a new wave coming in. That excitement of being a freshman spreads to all of your entire store base, your supplier base, whether they're on a farm or whether they're in the check stand. That's what freshman mentality means. Well, uh, you know, listen, cynicism is the it is sort of the enemy of innovation and growth, right? I mean, if you get cynical about stuff and you're not excited about it, there's no way you're going to propel yourself forward. I mean, yeah. I think that's I think that's normal. I've always said one of the lucky one of the things that I feel always felt lucky about is I make a living because I'm curious. That's right. I mean, so yeah. I learned stuff. I learned stuff every day, and that's you know. So it's it, and I actually get paid for it. So go figure. Um, it's it's a great way to go through life. The other thing is, and this ties back a little bit to what we were talking about earlier, which was the notion of the front lines. But I want to reinforce it because I think it's really important. Which is, I know that you really 
uh, believe strongly in the, the whole notion of the, and they have in the Marine Corps, which is that officers eat last. Talk about that a little bit. Look, um, I, every, every company that I've had the honor to lead, I start day one with the executive team and I say, here is a company that how it's normally organized. And it's just a triangle, Kevin, it's just a triangle. And the top of that triangle is the CEO and at the bottom is the front line. I said, we're reversing it. We're flipping the triangle. That triangle now is the front lines at the top of the organization and the CEO is at the bottom last, okay, to your point. Why is that? Well, first of all, in any brick and mortar company, 95 to 98% of the front line, of its employees are on the front line. Whom better to be able to, to react, interact, to be flexible, to make those customers feel good than 98% of your company? How do you get it, get it that way? You get it that way by going last. You get it that way, as we talked earlier, about never being bigger than the front line. But I kind of sort of came up with that on a consulting gig I had between some CEO roles that I was doing, uh, doing uh, uh, on some uh, a potential shrink finding in, in, in a company. So I, I, they, I said, how many executives? There's 30 executives, fine. So I, I show up with, with pizza enough for 30 people. Well, unfortunately there was 35 people in there. And I said, wow, you guys start and I will go ahead and call for more pizza. I'm calling for more pizza. And lo and behold, the chairman and the CEO got first in line. The hell, how did the chairman and CEO go in front of their, 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 their direct reports? Cause they didn't, they want to make sure they had pizza. I didn't take that gig. And I pr promise to preach about that every single day, that leaders never go first. You can leave from behind. And you can see, you can just see how your company is going. And you're giving credit to, to your point earlier, these frontline workers. So there's a, there's a lot of conversation in the industry about whether that as, they, as it moves through what we're going through now, and again, who knows how long this is going to last. You know, everybody talks about a new a new normal. Not a phrase I love. I, I kind of prefer, I prefer like new reality because I have no idea what normal means. But I, I, there's also a lot of people talk about the notion that, you know, they just want to get back to the way things were. And I kind of think that that's sort of the wrong attitude, that rather than think about getting back to the way things were, the focus should be on coming out of this thing and, and being absolutely better than before that uh, having learned uh, having learned lessons applied them to the business figured out what you're good at what you're not good at be better at the things you're good at maybe get rid of the things you're not good at but you know figure out how to compensate for weaknesses is that something you'd agree with that we can be better than than uh, as an industry you know six months a year from now than than we were six months ago i think we're better now than pre-pandemic I think we're better now. I think all retailers are better now. And I think that if anything, uh, they are reminded that, that, that during these times that, that our jobs are actually to serve the communities that we are in. And I mentioned earlier in this, what I read on, the, on this white paper, that you, if, if, if you think about all the things, uh, communication, respecting, respecting the front line, if you think about making sure you tell the story, if you're thinking about all these things that you're going to come out of this stronger than you were before. There is no normal anymore. You're exactly right. And I'm, not, I'm like you, I don't know what the new normal is, but I can tell you now from what I've seen and from what has transpired over the last four to five months, the supplier community is better. Okay. And I think that the retailers are going to be better. We have seen what happens when 40% of, 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 uh, of food purchased elsewhere goes away and comes back into our stores. And so now I think that all retailers have a better sense of urgency. They have more respect for what their front lines do. And, and I just think that, that I think personally that, that it's, 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 we're stronger as an industry than we were when we went, went back into this. I really believe that. So let me ask some questions that have been sent in by people who are watching. Um, and for those of you who are watching, I, I have sort of condensed some of these and edited them a little bit. So I'm not going to use your names because I mix things up a bit. Um, but I'm going to try and get to everything that uh, all the questions that were asked. So um, one uh, viewer wrote in to say that Albertson sales of organic apples tend to be much lower than Safeways. Is it a given that because these are two different banners with distinct personalities that it's always going to be that way? Well, I don't know about that uh, in, in particular. I, I will tell you probably that 
uh, our pavilion banner or our star market in Boston banner is probably a higher percent of sales in organic apples than in Albertsons or a Safeway. I think it all depends upon who your consumer base is and how, and how quickly did that store get set up, whether it's Albertsons or a Safeway, uh, for organic business. I don't even know what here in Jacob's store, what that, how that as a percent of total, the, the organic apples do. We don't look at that individually. We're looking at that as a group of organics in particular. So let me, let me, let me actually pose the question this way. Is there a, do you think there's always going to be a ceiling on the sale of organics or is, does that just not exist that, that the ceiling is where you want it to be as opposed to an arbitrary number? I mean, just based on what, what Jacob and Tim were telling us, it doesn't sound like there's a ceiling there. There's no ceiling at all. I'm telling you right now, when we land, when, 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 when I was at Albertsons, I'm looking at the organics brand, I'm looking at it year over year, increases day after day after day after day. It's a matter of the back to what you said earlier about how you communicate. I think we're communicating better to our consumers. I think that we're getting better communications from our suppliers. But to answer your question in succinctly, there's no ceiling. The ceiling is where do you want it to be? And you all know that in this industry, when you're selling organics, there's more margin in the organics than there is in, in other things as well. And we're seeing the supplier community too shift some of their production to organics as well, and not just in produce, but in ambient also. Next question. Is it a given that if pandemic-related deaths get to a certain point, and this viewer, by the way, says 300,000, which would be about twice the current level, but who knows, 200,000, whatever the number happens to be, and the nation slides into recession, that the sale of organics as well as specialty foods necessarily will go down. No, that's not, there's no way they can answer that. Again, I will tell you that organics have been growing for the last probably, uh, when I got back in the business in 2018, after being away from supermarkets, uh, uh, since 2002, I was amazed at the long tail of sustained growth uh, that organics and specialty, for that matter of fact, uh, showed. But but I think what you have to realize is that, uh, and again, heaven forbid that we get to 300,000 deaths, heaven forbid that. Uh, I will tell you that as long as we're seeing food that was purchased away from home being purchased in the supermarket, there's no ceiling, number one. And number two is, it's everything that we see in our stores is moving through. So I don't think it has anything to do with that. Just my opinion. Yeah. And, and listen, to go back to what we were talking about before, the fact of the matter is people, when people are eating at home, they, they have been spending more on food. They've been spending more on wine because and they've been, it's been the indulgence that even if it costs a little bit more money, it is, um, it's been worth it. And, and especially because nobody's going to the movies, nobody's going to the theater, nobody's going to concerts, nobody's going to restaurants. And so, I agree with you. I don't, I don't necessarily think, and although it'll probably depend to some degree how long it lasts and also how long the recession lasts. But the, I'll, again, tell, I'll tell you this too, and I bet it applies to everybody in this room. I'm just noticing since March, my monthly visa charges are way down. It's not because I'm spending more in supermarkets, it's because I'm not eating in restaurants. And so, you know, when I might buy a bottle of wine in, in a grocery store for X and maybe in a restaurant, it's double X for that same wine. I'm spending less overall and I'm eating more at home. So again, I think that I think that the, 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 the supermarket retail business is going to get stronger over the next 18 months. And heaven forbid we have 300,000 uh, COVID-19 deaths. So another question from a, a viewer, what's your sense of the plant-based industry? And is, is that, is that strike you as being something that's got a lot of legs? And then the th same thing I think would apply to all the dairy alternatives, right? I mean, every, everything seems to be an alternative to what the original thing was. Is that stuff, is that a fad? Is it a trend? Is it got legs? What do you think? It's a trend. I see it as a trend. I see it as a trend in, 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 in all departments. I, it, 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 it's, I'm not saying it's a trend, say in Europe or Asia, but it's definitely a trend in the United States. So I don't think that fad is going away. It's like, why are people buying more organic produce? It's, it's some of this is, 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 is concern for the environment. Some of it's concern for their health. But I'm saying when I look at the numbers uh, in, in, in our, by department, uh, in, in all of our areas that if it's a fad, it's a, it's, it's, it's not like uh, hula hoops and, uh, and, and beetle haircuts. I mean, it's, it's got a long tail on it. And I, I, 
I suspect because right before the restaurants closed down and you see it today, I saw Starbucks has a plant-based breakfast sandwich. And so people are looking for these choices. In this world we're in more so than ever, we've got to give the customer what they want, where they want it and how they want it, period of end of story. And, and, and so as a supplier of anything, we, we, they just got to supply the outlet supermarkets here uh, with the product that we can sell because these, these, these opportunity categories that you're talking about, it's not going away. Um, we've sort of answered this, but I want to ask you one more time to make sure we underline it for the person who wrote this question. Do you view, view organic and organic produce as something that has become mainstream or do you think it has a ways to go to become mainstream? No. I look at it, Jacob right now, I'm telling you it's mainstream. And I would think if he's doing 40 to 50% of his produce business in, um, in, 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 in organics, it's not, it's not going away. It's, it's definitely mainstream. Not, not only here, but particularly in, in our supermarkets as well. But again, Kevin, it's how it's being merchandised. Organics, when I was in the produce department, first of all, basically didn't exist. And then I had one little corner uh, uh, with green matting that eventually the product would rot because the sprinklers hit it for so much and nobody would pick it up. But now it's probably, it, it, it takes over more square footage than I think anybody would have, retail square footage than anybody would have ever imagined uh, in a produce department today. Another question. Can you talk a little bit about sustainability as an industry priority, especially because over the last few months, it seems to have taken a backseat, right? With everybody was doing bring your own bag and now nobody wants to bring their own bag because you want to use plastic bags. So it, the, the focus has changed. So how do you see the sustainability um, trend playing out? It's table stakes. You have to be in that business, not just in bags, plastics, things like that, but in how you, how, what you do with your, 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 uh, your, your old produce or your own meat. How, do, do you uh, decompost? Do you, do you do all these things with it? And it's not only table stakes, you have to do this. But there are also companies that will invest in companies that are following what sustainability methods are. It has to be part of your story. And so the story of public retailers, now that we're public, sure, we're looking at cash flow, we're looking at debt, we're looking at EBITDA. We got to talk too, just on how much we're doing with regards to our environment and how much we're doing to create a sustainable future for all, not just products, but supply items as well. So it is something that is as important as it's ever been, even in these times. And the people that are in charge of these in the supermarket, especially at, at, at here at, at Albertson's companies, are making sure that it stays front and center. Last question. And I know this is the kind of question that, that you love. So this is from um, someone who writes, what is your advice to a young professional who wants to get into a growing area in the food business? Is there a ground floor opportunity that you think has the most growth potential? I always say this. I say this when I speak to graduating seniors. I say it when I speak to, um, to Fortune 500 companies or to independent hardware store owners or to anybody. I, I always say that you're going to be successful, as successful if you, as you want, if you follow a couple of things. So in getting into the food business, I would tell you that get in, take the job nobody wants, and you'll find yourself being ultra successful. And once you get in and you're working, make sure that you care more than others think possible. Because in this business, again, whether it's product that you're caring about or whether it's people that are putting that product that you care about, once you find out that you're listening to them and you're asking them questions and you see how they move, they can become your platform for success. But you've got to take that first step. Go where you've never been before, I always say, to find out what it is you like. And in these times, as I told 100 seniors at the University of Washington two weeks ago, you might not necessarily get a job in what your career choice is. However, by going where you've never been before and looking for opportunities that you wouldn't think you would even want to do, you're going to find things out that quite, quite frankly, it might surprise you, but be curious about where you're going. And, and, and the food industry right now is probably as strong as it's ever been with regard to hiring. And so it's the opportunity now for everybody to talk to your store manager, talk to uh, the division leader, talk to the CEO and, and get something going because the opportunities are great in this business. Wow. 
That's terrific. Well, listen, Jim, I really appreciate your time. Uh, the insights I know have been uh, invaluable uh, to the, both the retailers and the suppliers who have been watching this. Uh, I know you and I were both looking forward to, to seeing everybody in Monterey uh, this summer, which unfortunately we were not able to do. So I hope we were able to give them a taste of what we would have provided live on stage. Kevin, uh, listen, uh, I wish we were there as well. But to the community of, the, uh, of, of, uh, of this Organic Produce Summit, I want to say thank you again. I want to say thank you for helping um, all retail uh, and Albertsons companies, of course, and Island Market for having product out there, for getting through these tough times. And again, I think there's a big tailwind now pushing all of us to, to keep the product supply lines going, sprinkling a little bit of R&D, ask your, uh, for the suppliers, to work with the retailers, take some chances. Uh, and let's get some things going. But again, thank you very much, Kevin. I appreciate that. Matt, I appreciate uh, you as well. And uh, look, look forward to seeing all of you soon. Take care. Thanks a lot, everybody. See you next time. That was some great insight, Jim and Kevin. Thank you. We want to sincerely thank all OPS sponsors and exhibitors who have stuck by us during these challenging times and look forward to seeing you next year in Monterey. We have a tremendous show in store for you for OPS 2021, and we hope to see all of you there. Until then, be safe, and thank you so much for your continued support.